Welcome to Social Science, Standard 9, Civics, Unit 4, Forms of Government, Part 2. I am Sakthivel Murugan, going to present this unit. The last part, we learned about forms of government, meaning types of constitution, unity form of government, merits and demerits of unity form of government. Finally, we learn about unity futures of Indian constitution. In this part, we are going to learn about federal form of government, parliamentary form of government and presidential form of government. First, let us start to learn about federal form of government. The classification of governments into unity and federal is based on the nature of relations between the national and the regional governments. Federal government is one in which powers are divided between the national government and the regional governments by the constitution itself and both operate in their respective jurisdiction independently. USA, Switzerland, Australia, Canada, Russia, Brazil, Argentina have federal form of governments. In a federal model, the national government is known as federal government or the central government or the union government and the regional government is known as the state government or the provincial government. Now we are going to see about the merits of federal form of government. Reconciliation of local autonomy with national, national unity. Division of power between center and states leads to administrative efficiency. It gives rise to big states. Distribution of powers check the despotism of central government. More suitable for bigger countries, it is good for economic and cultural progress, demerits of federal form of government. Federal government is weaker when compared to the unity government. Federal government is more expensive. Provincial tendencies are very common. Lack of uniformity in administration. Threat to national unity. Distribution of powers between center and states leads to conflicts, double citizenship. A rigid constitution cannot be mentored easily for changing needs. The state governments sometimes place hindrances in foreign policies. Next we are going to see about federal futures of Indian constitution. Dual government, that means two government, a written constitution. Our constitution is a written one. Already we le learned about the written and unwritten constitution, isn't it? Our constitution is a written constitution. Division of powers. The powers, they divided between the central government and the state government. Supremacy of the constitution. The constitution is supreme in the federal system of our government. The constitution is the supreme law of the land. The laws enacted by the center and the states must conform to its provisions. A rigid constitution, independent judiciary, bicameralism. Bicameralism means two legislatures. For example, in a state, MLA, MLC. In union government, we got two houses, namely Rajya Sabha and Lok Sabha. Now, we are going to see about the differences between the unity form of government and the federal form of government. Unity form of government, only one level of government are subunits. Mostly single citizenship. Subunits cannot separate independently. 
no division of power centralization of powers these are the points of unity form of government now let us see about the federal form of government's points first one two levels of commands that mean the state command and the central command they provide dual citizenship federal units are answerable in central government division of power between center and the state decentralization of power now we are going to see about the parliamentary form of government modern democratic governments are classified into parliamentary and presidential on the basis of the nature of relations between the executive and the legislative organs of the government the parliamentary system of government is the one in which the executive is responsible to the legislature for its policies and acts the parliamentary government is also known as cabinet government a responsible government or westminster model of government and is prevalent in britain japan canada and india among others futures of parliamentary form of government nominal and real head nominal head for example president of india real head the prime minister of india majority party rule the party which get majority during the general election may be from the government both in central as well as in the state also collective responsible answerable person to the legislature dual membership leadership of the prime minister merits of the parliamentary form of government harmony between legislature and executive responsible government prevents dictatorship wide representation demerits of parliamentary form of government unstable government no continuity of policies dictatorship of the cabinet against separation of powers next finally we are going to see about the presidential form of government the presidential form of government is also known as non parliamentary or fixed executive system of government basically built on the principles of separation of powers and is prevalent in usa brazil russia and sri lanka among others futures of the presidential form of government the president as a head of the state as occupies a ceremonial position the president is elected by an electoral college for a fixed tenure of 4 years the president governs with the help of a cabinet or a smaller party called kitchen cabinet the legislative executive and judicial powers of the government are separated and vested in three independent organs of the government merits of the presidential system of government democratic effective control by the president facilitate decision making state government now let us see about the demerits of the presidential form of government can degenerate into dictatorship strain relationship between executive and legislature lack of harmony between the legislature and the executive now we are going to see about the differences between the parliamentary form of government and the presidential form of government now first we are going to see about the presidential form of government president is directly elected by the people president is supreme separation of powers independent branches president head of the state president head of the government individual leadership president is not accountable to congress now we are going to see about the 
parliamentary form of government first point prime minister is from the majority party central legislature is supreme absence of separation powers centralization independent branches with overlapping functions president head of the state prime minister head of the government collective leadership collective and individual responsibility finally we are going to see about the relationship between the center and the state in india india is a union of states where the power is shared between the center and the states as per the procedures mentioned in the constitution of india though the powers are shared between the central and state governments the final decision is by the central government is all matters the relationship between the center and the states are number 1 legislative relations indian constitution articles from 245 to 255 second one administrative relations indian constitution articles 256 to 263 number 3 financial relations indian constitution articles 268 to 293 both the central and state governments have the power to make laws but the matters differ the center can make laws applicable to the whole nation or certain matters called as the union list the states have the powers to make laws in some matters only applicable to their own state called as the state list the concurrent list includes the subjects on which both the central and state governments can make laws first let us see about the union list the union government can make laws for the whole country union list has 100 subjects this includes foreign affairs defense armed forces post and telegraphs industrial trade and commercial and so on the second one is state list the state government they can enact law as per the constitution of our country the state list consists of 61 subjects which include public order in the state police prisons local governments agriculture and so on the third list is concurrent list that mean both the central government as well as the state government can enact law the concurrent list has 52 subjects which include criminal and civil procedures marriage and divorce economic and special planning newspapers books and printing presses population control and so on finally we are going to see one more very important topic cross national happiness is a developing philosophy as well as an index which is used to measure the collective happiness in any specific nation the concept was first mentioned in the constitution of bhutan which was enacted on 18 july 2008 the term cross national happiness was coined by the fourth king of bhutan in the 1970s the gnhs central tenets are sustainable and equitable socio economic development environmental conservation preservation and promotion of culture and good governance gnh the main cross national happiness is distinguishable by valuing collective happiness as the core of governance and by emphasizing harmony with nature and traditional values yes students in this part we elaborately learn about federal form of government merits and demerits salient features parliamentary form of government merits and demerits finally we learned about the procedural form of government 
merits and demerits of that government along with this we learn about the differences between parliamentary form of government and presidential form of government next very important topic the relationship between the center and the state also we learned in this part yes thank you students bye